Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Natalie Caldell and I'm a faculty member in the Department of Biological Engineering here at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'm happy to have you here today in my teaching laboratory and we'll talk about uh, something that's common to all living cells, namely proteins. Now you may have heard about proteins as something that's important uh, for building muscles or something important for living cells or even something that's built from a building block called amino acids and all that is true. But today we'll be talking about something else, namely about how you might tweeze apart proteins inside a cell and separate them one from the other. And the reason that you might want to do that is because uh, you might want to purify the proteins for food or for medicines or for materials. So if you were to open up a cell and look inside, you'd see that it's really crammed full of materials. Uh, so full, in fact, that as biochemists or biological engineers, you might need to take apart some of the things that are in the cells and separate the things you want from the things that you don't. So before we start to talk about the techniques for doing that tweezing apart of materials, what I'd like you to do is take time in your classroom there and remember the kinds of things that are in the cells. I've started a chart for you and filled in one of the lines, but if you could take time there and talk about the materials in the cells that are uh, started for you on this chart, and then join me here again, we'll go over the table together. Welcome back. I have filled out the chart and hopefully our answers agree reasonably well. So let's take a look. Uh, there are four molecules in the cell, four main macromolecules. They include the nucleic acids, which are the DNA and the RNA, the proteins, we have the polysaccharides, and also the lipids. All of these macromolecules are made up of smaller building blocks and all play really critically important roles in the cell. For example, the DNA and RNA, are key players in the heredity of the cells, whereas the lipids make up the membranes that envelop the cell and hold it together. The polysaccharides provide energy and structure among, as well as among uh, other roles in the cell. But of the four polymers that we'll talk about, we're gonna focus on the proteins today, which are the major workhorses in the cell. Proteins catalyze chemical reactions and let the cells do the job that they are actually supposed to be doing. When we eat foods that are rich in protein, what we're doing is breaking down the proteins that are in the foods, using the building blocks from those proteins to make new proteins that our cells need. For example, those new proteins might be antibodies or hormones, enzymes, or just uh, important cellular structures. So since we're all familiar with foods, let's start by thinking about the kinds of foods that are very rich in protein. In this next slide, you'll see that there are lots of foods that we think of as rich in protein. The beans, for example, the meat, the eggs, the yogurt, all of these we think of as protein-rich foods. In fact, though, they have not only proteins, but all the other macromolecules of the cell. So when we eat the beans that come from a living plant, we're eating not just the proteins from that plant, but also the lipids and the DNA, the RNA, uh, and the polysaccharides. So what if, in fact, what I wanted to do was study the proteins that are in those plant cells? There are not just proteins in those plant cells, but many other things. So I will need a technique to separate the proteins from the other components of the cell. And what I'd like to do next is show you a laboratory technique that separates proteins from DNA, lipids, and polysaccharides. And that technique is called SDS PAGE. It separates proteins based on their size. And there are three main stages to running an SDS PAGE experiment. And we'll show you those now. So if we wanted to compare the proteins that are in the lentils and the green peas, we'd start by collecting some cells, some lentils and some green peas. And to these cells, we would add some dye. This dye also has some detergent that helps break the cells open. To further break the cells open, we would boil the samples for a few minutes and finally move on to the next stage of the experiment where we would load it onto a protein gel. The protein gel separates the cells by size with the smallest proteins moving fastest through the gel 
uh, and to the bottom using electrophoresis. And in the last step, we remove the gel from the electrophoresis chamber and mix it with a dye, Kumasi stain, that will let us see where the proteins have moved through the gel. And before I show you what the results of this kind of an experiment might be, I'd like you to take some time to make some predictions. I have three cartoons for possible outcomes from this kind of an experiment. In the first cartoon, the two blue staining patterns look almost identical. For the sake of argument, we'll call the one on the left the proteins from the lentils, and the one on the right the proteins from the green peas. And in the first picture, the protein pattern, which are the blue bands, look almost the same. In the second picture, the protein pattern for the lentils has only a few proteins that were stained, whereas the green peas, there are many. And in the third picture, it looks like there are many proteins for both types of peas, but they're quite different from one another. So I'd like you to take some time and think about the kind of banding pattern you might expect for this type of an experiment, and then come back and we'll talk about your predictions. Hello again. I don't know which of the pictures you thought was most likely to be the result of our Kumasi staining experiment, but in fact, if you were here in my lab and ran this experiment, you would see that picture one is closest to the result you would find for the two protein profiles. And that's because most of the proteins that are in the lentils and in the green peas are the same. Most proteins in the cell have housekeeping functions that all cells have to carry out. So this is a little tricky then. What if you wanted to study something that was specialized to say the lentils and not in the green peas? And you wanted to find a protein and study that protein just from lentils. Well, to do that, you would have to tweeze apart that specialized protein from all the general housekeeping proteins in that cell type. And the way we do that in the laboratory is to exploit some of the differences in different kinds of proteins. So I have a cartoon here to remind you that proteins come in many shapes and sizes. Some are larger than others, some are negatively charged, uh, some have molecules attached to them. And for protein purification techniques, we can use these different properties of the proteins to separate them one from the other within a given cell type. So we're going to try a very simple protein separation based on just three types of models uh, within a very simple cell. We're going to mix a very simple cell that's made from small purple dots, from purple puffballs, and from flat disks. And we'll make a very simple cell that has just three types of components in it. And over there, I want you to think about ways that you might be able to separate those very small purple specks from the larger puffballs and the flat disks. And once you've done that, think of another way that you might separate the puffballs from the flat disks. And the only trick is you cannot reach into this cup to pull one protein out from the other. And once you've come up with some strategies for separating this very simple mixture that represents proteins in a very simple cell, we'll come back here and we'll talk about ways we can do it in the laboratory. Welcome back. I hope you've had some fun thinking of ways that you might separate the proteins that are in our very simple cell, the purple small dots from the puffballs from the flat disks. So uh, if we want to separate the very small dots from the puffballs and the flat disks, one way that I thought of was to use the difference in size and use a sieve to separate the small dots from the larger fractions within the cell. And if we do that, it works reasonably successfully to separate the small purple dots from the puffballs and disks. Then if what we wanted to do was try to separate the puffballs and the disks one from the other, I thought we could try to exploit the difference in their weight or their density by maybe adding some water with the puffballs floating and the flat disks sinking. This would be, if we were separating proteins out from a cell, separation based on differences in density. There is another way to separate them out, and that's because I know something about those flat, colorful disks, and that is that they're magnetic. 
So if we still had our very simple cell, a mixture of the small purple dots, the puff balls, and the flat colorful disks, we could use a magnet to pull the uh, small disks, the flat colorful disks, out from the mixture and separate them that way. This would be akin to separating proteins based on their charge. So these are just some strategies that uh, biochemists and bioengineers use to separate proteins that are within cells because cells are very complicated mixtures of proteins and sometimes you want to study just one type of the proteins that's in the cell rather than all of the proteins in the mixture. So that's our quick tour of the proteins that are within the cell and different techniques we can use to separate them. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the techniques and the tools that we have for separating proteins and that you'll continue to think of interesting experiments that you might do with these tools and techniques. Hi, welcome. I hope that the lesson on protein purification has been or would be interesting for you and your students to work through. I appreciate that this lesson is not really a standalone lesson and needs both a lot of basic understanding about the nature of cells and the kinds of things that are within cells, as well as some specialized things uh, that you may or may not have uh, at hand there. So what I'd like to do just briefly is talk about uh, what I would recommend as background material for this kind of a lesson, as well as some modifications that you might make if you were interested in teaching this lesson but didn't have particulars of the equipment that we showed within the video. So in terms of background, I think it's important that the students have a very good understanding of what cells contain, the uh, particulars of the molecules that make up the cells and their different functions. Very quickly, we sort of review that there are monomers that make up polymers, that there are polymers that have very important roles within the cells. So we talk about nucleic acids being DNA and RNA and going into uh, the functions of heredity, but that's not something we cover within the module. So if that's new information for the students, that should be covered and comfortable before trying to talk about just the proteins within the cell, or you may run the risk of just uh, tilting the cells and the student's understanding of cells to just protein, a bag of proteins. Um, similarly, the nature of proteins is also sort of presumed to have been understood by your students already. So things like proteins coming in different shapes and sizes and having different chemical properties like charge and density. That is something uh, in designing this video that I've assumed you may have covered with your students already. And if not, you may want to cover with your students explicitly in advance of running this uh, separation video. In terms of the techniques that we show, uh, I think it's very fun to think about ways that uh, similar types of cells, like the lentils and the peas, are similar in ways that they are different. And really that that's an important question that biologists ask and bioengineers can make useful in different circumstances. So we chose uh, plants and things that you might have readily available, but if lentils and green peas aren't easily uh, found, many similar types of cells could be compared in this sort of way. Um, in terms of running the gel and uh, the very quick demonstration of the different stages of running a protein gel, that really was intended just to start a conversation. There is no way that I've shown you enough detail within the video for you to actually run a gel in the fashion that I've shown. I don't give the contents, for example, of the loading die. Uh, and there are certain safety issues that you might want to consider before you actually run the lab if you run a lab similar to this. I do think running a lab, if you have that capacity, would be very interesting and exciting to add to this video. But it's certainly not necessary, and there's certainly not enough information in the video to fully run the laboratory. Um, but I do uh, hope that the at least uh, stages of the SDS page, the separation technique, is clear from the video. And if not, it's something that could be discussed further within the classroom. Uh, it could also be compared to other separation techniques, for instance, agarose gel electrophoresis, which separates DNA by size. And that might be an interesting add-on lesson to this lesson. Finally, the uh, last segment that we uh, build our very simple cell made out of small purple dots, puffballs, and flat metallic disks 
is something that I think is an effective demonstration of the different properties that we can exploit from proteins in order to separate proteins from a complex mixture. If you don't have exactly those materials, there are lots of things that could be substituted. I mean, anything that floats, for instance, small pieces of styrofoam could be used in place of the puff balls. Small bits of sugar could be used in place of the small purple dots, all sorts of things like that. So there is no um, particular uh, magic to the three things that I mix together to make my very simple cell. The only idea would be that uh, you would want to use, you'd want to mimic the kinds of things that you find as properties of proteins with the properties of the small objects that you mix together to form your very simple cell. So I hope that this lesson provides a launching point for both a review of basic cellular structures and important macromolecules that you would find in the cell, and also a way to advance the conversation into either techniques or technologies that you use to study cells, um, or uh, other kinds of experiments you might do on cells if you wanted to compare them one to the other. Proteins are just one way to compare cells, but um, I thought by focusing the lesson on proteins and protein purification, it might be a way to launch into other discussions about different types of things you would discuss, uh, try to study about cells and different separation techniques you might employ uh, to further understand very complex mixtures. So I hope it is uh, an enjoyable and productive lesson for you and your students, uh, and thank you very much.